My name is Bobby Brook. I'm a co-founder and the CEO of Intervene Immune, and uh, we are a company focused on uh, reversal of age-related immune system decline. This, this initial quote up here is from Y Combinator. I heard that great talk from uh, Joe Betts LaCroix there, who's uh, you know, really uh, an incredible manifestation of what one guy can really do in this field. So I appreciate the work and kind of the connections you've provided for us in the past, Joe. Uh, but you know this quote you know shows that you know in this uh, the, the kind of intrigue of this space that if you could have a company or, or a pill that can uh, influence extend lifespan by two years that's a hundred billion dollar dollar company you know those are gaudy numbers like like with many uh, biotech companies but uh, but it, it really shows why uh, pharma and others are you know are, are very intrigued and and as a former Biotech investment analysts, I really, uh, I buy that. You know, I, I believe that, that aging is a, a very powerful paradigm for drug discovery, and it's one that uh, it's, its time has come. It's a very ripe area, and when companies focus on it, and there are going to be some uh, incredible returns out there. Well, Intervene Immune is actually a for-profit biotech company. Uh, we are focused on uh, developing or, or using agents that are already approved, and I think we're we're one of the one of the few entities out there that can realistically say, you know, what we're doing in the clinic today may be able to have this type of effect or even more profound uh, effects than that. I'll get into the details. So we are, we are a group that is interested in uh, not just moving the needle a little bit for health span or two or three uh, you know, additional years of life, but you know, far more profound effects than that for what it's worth. You know, I think this is an industry where the data has to speak for itself. You have to uh, conduct rigorous trials and publish the data and preferably you know, for there to, you know, to be clinical data out there backing everything up. And we conducted a study. The manuscript for it is about to be submitted. There are certain details I won't be able to, to talk about uh, publicly today, but uh, there is a little bit more I can talk about privately. So I encourage you to, to reach out to me. And uh, if, if you'd like to follow up, if you're a journalist, I can certainly provide more details, provided it's kept under an embargo until the, the publication is released. We're focused on uh, reversal of age-related immune system decline. It's pretty well known that in late life, the immune system collapses and uh, the incidence of cancer spikes about the same time. Uh, in, the, in the elderly, uh, many people die of pneumonia uh, or susceptibility to flu. Uh, sepsis, and uh, you know, there's also pretty intriguing data that's shown in centenarians, so people that live to be 100, in all of those people, they were able to stave off the immune risk phenotype or the immune risk profile, a set of markers uh, related with uh, immunosenescence. And uh, you know, in the and that's really what we're trying to do for everyone is is to uh, give them the ability to reverse or stave off age-related immune system decline. The thymus it's part of central tolerance, so trains your immune cells to to know what to attack and and what to tolerate. It's something that degrades or atrophies with age in everybody. So by around the age of 40, it's largely been replaced by fatty tissue, so non-functional tissue. But your immune system gets by for quite a while where your peripheral T cell pool is, is active. And it, it's not really until kind of your mid-70s where it appears that most people experience this kind of collapse of, of their immune system. The good news is, is that there are agents that may be able to reverse this and, and ones that are already approved and already available today. Uh, and there's this, this data are shown from uh, preclinical and clinical studies of growth hormone that was used to induce uh, thymus regeneration. And there are rodent studies and imaging data with it. There also was an N of one study conducted by my co-founder at, at Intervene Immune, uh, Dr. Greg Fay. And he showed with structural data, so imaging data, that he, he was able to regenerate his own thymus. And there was later work that was done by Laura Napolitano at UCSF in HIV or AIDS patients that they, a similar protocol at higher dose was able to be used to effectively uh, induce structural and functional regeneration of the thymus uh, in trite of uh, kind of uh, 
you know, kind of stave off the, the kind of ravages that occur in, in HIV. And uh, so we decided, uh, I, I approached uh, Greg about this and decided we should form a company focused on it and, and do something in, in the clinic to substantiate it. And uh, he's a, a prominent, probably the world's uh, most preeminent cryobiologist, I'd say. And he's also a very notable gerontologist. So he's, he's a, a fellow of the American Aging Association. He's, he's been that since 2005. He's also written this excellent book, or he's the editor-in-chief uh, of it. And I believe Dr. Uh, Mike West, who, who was uh, presenting earlier, is also a, a co-author of it. But you know, I, if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to, to check it out. And um, you know, it's about eight, eight years old now, but especially chapter six from Greg about precedence for the control of, of aging. It's, it's really a fascinating uh, chapter and the entire book on, on different methods for, for life extension. My own background is in bioengineering and finance from Georgia Tech and UCLA. I spent about five years working for a hedge fund uh, focused on healthcare and biotech. I went on to, to found a cancer drug development company that's become IOVANCE Biotherapeutics, so we're, uh, uh, where we're using a cancer immunotherapy, so harnessing the body's immune system to fight cancer. And we've also recently been joined at Intervene Immune by Paul Hynek, who's a, a Wharton MBA and experienced tech entrepreneur, and he actually was a, a, a volunteer in our initial clinical study. So it didn't take long to kind of bring him up to speed with everything we're doing. The rest of our, our team that was involved with the, with the trial uh, includes some collaborators from UCLA and Stanford. So we had Dr. Steve Horvath, uh, who's a professor of human genetics at UCLA, developer of the epigenetic or methylation clock for aging, and, and also Dr. Shreyas Vasanawala, who's the chief of body MRI from Stanford. And you know, the first order of business for Intervene Immune, and, and largely you know, this is, is what we've been focused on for the last three or four years, is conduct of the TRIM trial, which the acronym stands for Thymus Regeneration, Immunorestoration, and Insulin Mitigation. So we're working to mitigate or counteract one of the principal side effects of growth hormone, an, an already FDA-approved agent. And so this was an FDA-approved and IRB-approved study conducted mostly at uh, Stanford and uh, conducted with a pretty modest budget, so, so less than half a million dollars you know, was spent in, in conducting the study in uh, 10 healthy older men aged 50, 50 to 65. And digging into some of the results, starting with safety, which of course is, is pretty important, you know, the, the uh, initial uh, aspect, the, the chart on the upper left talks about, you know, did we achieve one of the primary goals, which is to mitigate that, that known uh, side effect of growth hormone where it raises insulin levels and it, uh, it's diabetogenic, and we were able to do that. Uh, you know, another risk factor, you know, something that uh, people are worried about with especially chronic high-dose use of growth hormone is uh, increased cancer risk because growth hormone is a mitogenic agent. It makes cells grow of, of all types. Uh, but what we experienced with just a 12-month treatment, that there was, in fact, a reduction in uh, perceived cancer risk, at least based on PSA levels, and that we had other biomarkers that, that really show that it appears that, that our treatment actually reduces overall cancer risk. Another uh, you know, kind of comment that gerontologists have, have gave us, given us you know, when, when designing this study was you know, a worry about uh, whether or not and kind of revving up the immune system would promote inflammation or, or chronic inflammation. And we found that this, that it was quite the opposite effect. By stimulating thymus regeneration or, or kind of uh, stimulating the adaptive immune system, we were able to reduce chronic or reduce systemic inflammation based on pretty well validated markers like CRP and IL-6. And digging into some of the efficacy, these are uh, some of the preliminary efficacy is that we did indeed show structural and functional regeneration of the thymus you know, based on imaging data and immune cell subsets. The imaging, uh, some of the data here showing uh, MRI, kind of 3D reconstructions of, of, the, uh, of the thymus. And you can see the, the very significant you know, p-values with the, the effect on thymic density. And, and there were notable changes in the immune cell subsets, including changes to the CD4 to CD8 ratio, which that's part of the immune risk profile or immune uh, risk phenotype 
that uh, is associated with late life immune system collapse. So we improved that. And we also were able to show that certain patients had uh, significant naive T cell responses. Beyond that, what, what really was surprising for me, uh, you know, coming into this project, I, I guess I was pretty skeptical about the pace of progress within medicine and biotechnology, you know, being an analyst and seeing people talk about the same stuff for 10 or 15 years. What was exciting to me was, was that we, in addition to, the, you, know, uh, you know, this, we saw very broad systemic benefits in, in these people. And, uh, you know, there were like anecdotes of them reporting improvements in strength and mood and cognition. Hair darkening was something that was kind of out of left field that a couple of people reported, and we didn't even look at it at baseline. But you know, their 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 wives and parents were uh, adamant that this was occurring. So it's something that we'll follow up on in later studies. But beyond that, there there are very kind of validated, rigorous uh, markers of of systemic rejuvenation that we have data, uh, uh, you know, pointing to a, a strong effect in just. You know, these nine individuals who uh, completed the study. So, you know, a, a very significant, you know, p-value on, on, that, on that marker. Um, you know, and that's something I can't talk about quite yet, so, which is kind of frustrating. But, uh, but you know, the, the publication will be out there uh, before long. We're, we're hoping for it to be published you know, late this year, early next year. And so again, this, this kind of broad systemic rejuvenation effect by targeting the thymus to me was somewhat une unexpected um, and beyond really my hopes for, for the study, but, uh, th but there is a lot of you know, clini uh, clinical and preclinical data that, that points to the ability of GH, growth hormone, uh, as well as uh, thymus transplants to have that, uh, that effect. So the, the figures on the, the two on the left show the benefits of serial thymus transplants in an in vivo model and where it extends lifespan and it also uh, reverses to youthful levels a number of, a, of different you know, markers targeting the brain and liver and other uh, organ systems. And there also is pretty well-known data shown in the figure on the right from Rudman that was published maybe in 1990, 95 or so, you know, that, that shows the rege regenerative effects of GH on different organs, including uh, the, the liver, the muscle, skin, um, you know, a reduction in fat levels uh, from it. So we're pretty excited about you know this uh, the the results of this study um, you know and, and we we definitely feel there's justification to to move forward and and what we're focused on now is an extension study so targeting not just men age 50 to 65 but also women and also a more frail population older more frail population so up to age 79 and uh, and, and also looking to use other agents in combination with uh, with our, our existing uh, protocol in order to just refine uh, refine the protocol and optimize efficacy and as well as reduce the cost to make the, the therapy you know, more accessible for, for other people. And you know, I will say we're not a traditional, we're not taking a traditional drug development approach. We're not a traditional drug development company. You know, we're looking to uh, commercialize this this treatment you know, through a specialty clinic that's focused on immune system regeneration, and um, you know it's uh, you know drug development is time consuming and capital intensive, and you know the and the uh, and the results of our initial clinical study were pretty inspiring. It's kind of saying hey, we might be onto something. There, there might be a lot of low-hanging fruit in terms of using approved agents to, to have you know, a very targeted effect that has broad systemic effects. So, uh, so that's the approach uh, we feel like the data is kind of pointing us to. So, so that's where we're going. And the economic potential is there, whether you take a traditional drug development approach or what we're doing. You know, this is biotech, it's healthcare, takes up 17% of, of GDP or whatever. People care about it. You know, they're, they're gaudy numbers either way. Uh, you, know, in a, uh, you know, I really kind of liken what we're doing, especially, uh, again, kind of what di maybe differentiates us is using approved agents and also conducting pilot clinical studies, so kind of jumping into the clinic maybe a little earlier than other people would, as somewhat akin to like, you know, the, the, the Wright brothers pushing out a glider and, and seeing, you know, what works or what doesn't and trying to refine it kind of on, on the fly. You know, I'm, I'm a really 
big believer in this type of approach. I really wish more people would, would kind of look to do that you know, in medicine more broadly uh, for other indications. And um, you know, so, so I'm, I'm certainly kind of excited about the path we're on. And we are a company, we are ab about to initiate the Trim X study. So if, if there's any interest in investing or in participating in, in one of our studies, I, I certainly encourage you to, to reach out to me. Thanks a lot.